Many people don't like maths, but hopefully the tips and tricks that I'm going to be giving you in this video will help you get a decent score in your UCAP. Continue watching to find out how I achieved 860 out of 900 in the quantitative reasoning section of my UCAT exam. Hello everyone and welcome back to Joan's Med. If you are new here, my name is Hazar and I'm a first year medic studying at Barcelona, London. And if you are not new here, thank you so much for tuning into another video. I am someone who actually likes maths. However, even I found the quantitative reasoning section quite difficult when I first started preparing for my UCAT exam. But with more and more practice, I learned things that help make this section a lot easier for me. So now I'm here to share these things with you. So sit back, relax and let's get started. Most of the quantitative reasoning questions will be in the form of manipulating data that is given to you in graphs or tables. So make sure you practice this as much as you can. Alongside this, make sure you practice questions that include currency conversions, interest rates, percentage changes, ratios, speed distance time graphs, areas, volumes and averages such as calculated mean, mode, median and range. Make sure you practice questions including these things as much as you can because this is what is most likely going to be coming up in your exam so you want to be as prepared as you can. In the exam you do have an on-screen calculator that you can use if you want to do any quick calculations however please don't rely on it if you work on your mental maths it will allow you to do simple calculations in your head so you don't have to waste time to click the calculator then type in the numbers then get the answer and then type in your answer it's such a long process so if you can just do that in your head or on the whiteboard it will make life a lot easier for you and save you so much time in my opinion i think it's vital that you don't use a calculator unless you have to because it does waste a lot of your time and you can't afford that in the exam where you're under strict time constraints in saying this please make sure you practice how to actually use the on-screen calculator this might seem unnecessary but trust me this is a must i literally got an external keyboard for my laptop to practice using the on-screen calculator it's not like a normal handheld calculator so you need to get used to using the number pad on a keyboard to type in the numbers and then get your answers because it's way longer to use the mouse to click the numbers and then get your answer so guys please make sure you practice how to use the keyboard and and practice how to use the calculator on the screen so you can maximize the time you have to answer the questions in your exam. On screen I'll be putting the keyboard shortcuts that I recommend you guys learn to navigate yourself more easily around the exam and be more efficient with the time you have. The whiteboard might seem like a useless thing that they give you, but it can honestly be a lifesaver. Use the whiteboard to jot down any of the key figures you are given in the big paragraph of information to make it easier for yourself when you're answering the questions. Like I said, it can help you with any of your mental math calculations or any short calculations that can be done quickly on a whiteboard rather than take up time using the calculator. This is so important. There's no point working out the exact answer if you can see that all the other options are nowhere near your answer anyway. Sometimes you can guesstimate the answer for your question without actually having to do the full calculations. For example, this is a very simple question, but if they said what is 2.9 times 5.1 and the possible answers were 10, 15, 20 and 25, you know it's going to be around 15. So you don't have to actually work it out. You can simply pick that answer and move on to the next question. What I'm trying to say is it's important to understand that you don't have to do every single step of a calculation to guess the answer. This also goes with saying that sometimes you can immediately remove a possible answer. So if you can do this to make your life a lot easier. A really important thing that you guys need to remember is every single question is worth one mark. 
So one question, you might get three tables and four graphs that you have to understand and then answer the questions. And in another question, you might simply get one table. Now, each of these questions are going to give you the same number of marks. So it's going to be worth it if you spend your time on that one table question to actually work on trying to get the answers correct, rather than spending five minutes interpreting all the tables and graphs in the other question and then trying to answer the questions because it's simply going to waste too much of your time. You have to answer 36 questions in 24 minutes minutes so time is very valuable do not waste it take a few seconds to try and understand the question and answer it but if you can't it is okay guess flag skip i remember doing this in my exam for a few questions which had so much information that i just couldn't get my head around so i literally guessed the answer i flagged the question and i skipped it is okay to do that it is not the end of the world this ensures that you make the most out of your time and you are spending the time on the questions that you know you can actually get right so then you'll get those right and increase your score rather than spending five minutes on a question that is just so hard you can't answer in that time constraint and finally make sure you practice but not just practice normally practice in time conditions some of the questions we get in the quantitative reasoning section of the ucat exam can be done if we have 20 minutes to just spend our time on that one question and depict every little piece of information to try and answer it but that is not the case in the ucat exam you have to practice on the time conditions so you can prepare yourself and your mindset to how it will be on the exam day so the more you practice on the time conditions the better you will get at doing quick mental maths and the more questions you can get right um, and that is about it guys thank you so much for joining me in another UCAT video I really do hope that the tips of this video have helped you and now you feel more confident for the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT exam if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below and I'll answer as soon as I can and also make sure that you guys stay tuned for the following three videos on this channel which will be on the situational judgment test verbal reasoning and decision making as always make sure you guys like comment subscribe turn on your post notifications and also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you guys in a new video tomorrow. Bye!